Welcome to Excel Roundup. This is Deborah Dalgleish from Contextures.com. This week we're going to look at the results from the pivot table survey that we did last time, some dashboard design tips, workbook navigation suggestions, and how to filter a pivot table by using cells on the worksheet. First up is the pivot table survey results. And if you look at the Roundup blog post, I've got an embedded workbook there where you can see all the results. I've got one sheet that has all the details. There are a couple of other pivot tables that show how many people use pivot tables and what they think their skill level is and how much they like pivot tables. In this first sheet here, you can see the number of people who use them. There were 152 responses and most people by a wide margin do use pivot tables, only a few don't. There's a link here where you can download the workbook to look at it. You can also play with it in this embedded workbook. And there's a link here where you can click and download the Excel file from there. So I was glad to see so many people use pivot tables and their skill levels are quite good overall and people really seem to like them. So take a look at those details. The next article in the Roundup was one of my blog posts about worksheet navigation tips. Alex J, who has contributed other tips, shows some of the things he does in a large workbook. So some of the things that he suggests are coloring your sheet tabs in groups so you can easily get to a group and then start looking within that group for a specific sheet. Also, if you right click the little navigation arrows at the bottom left of the window, there's a little pop up list like this one that shows all the sheet names. So that's another quick way to get to a sheet. Alex also inserts blank sheets between the groups of colored tabs. And instead of putting a long name on that sheet, he just puts a space character or two or three. That breaks up the sheet tabs and gives a little white space, a little visual break between the tabs. And it also has the effect of when you look at that pop-up list on these arrows, those blank sheets create spaces between the groups so it's even easier to look through this long list. So take a look at that. There's a link here on the blog post to take you to the article with all the details. On my pivot table blog, I posted how you can create some drop down lists on a worksheet and use those to control a top 10 filter in a pivot table. With a top 10 filter, you can really focus on either the worst or best records in your data set. So if you want to select the best, you would choose top from this drop down list. And then you can decide how many top records or bottom records you want to show, whether it's five or 10 or 20. And by choosing from these cells, a bit of code runs in the background and that's automatically applied to the pivot table. I've got a sample file with the code in it that you can download and then there are details on how to get that into your own workbook. There are a couple of dashboard articles in the Roundup this week. One is from Chandu and he shows how to use the Get Pivot Data formula to pull data that's been summarized in a pivot table and show it on a dashboard. But if you use these formulas, you can extract key data and you can have drop downs that let people select a region or a salesperson or any other criterion. And then the get pivot data would use that information to show the summarized data. And another dashboard article that I found was from the science goddess. She writes in the Excel for education blog and she was trying to create a visual representation of four years of data for many students, different subject areas, and make sense of all that data in a clear way in Excel. You can see the various steps she went through trying different dashboard designs and then came up with one that worked for her and for her boss. Excel tips articles are always popular and I found one this week that had eight tips to help make you an Excel expert. Most of them were okay, there was nothing too new or exciting, but tip number seven told you to use the fixed function to knock off decimals in a number. Now the fixed function will do that, but a side effect is that instead of having a number after you use fixed, it changes that number into text, so it just looks like a number. 
If you try and add it up in a column of other numbers, it's only going to have a value of zero because it's text. So instead of that function, if you just want to round things, either use formatting or use another rounding function like round or ceiling or floor. And I've got a link to some of those other functions that you can use that will do a much better job for you. There are three announcements as well in the roundup this week. Uh, John Michaludis is having a giveaway on his Excel podcast. There's an online course that's free from Microsoft on analyzing and visualizing data with Excel. And you can register now for the Financial Modeling World Championships, and that begins on October 17th. So take a look at all those and all the other links. And that was the Excel Roundup for August 31st, 2015. For more Excel tips and tutorials, and to download the sample file for this video, please visit my Contextures website at www.contextures.com.